A federal judge said today that Donald Trump's attempted coup was likely a crime, as bombshell new reporting revealed that both Texas Senator Ted Cruz and the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas were closely involved in Trump's attempt to overturn the election. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Look, let's just get this out of the way. Obviously, what everyone would rather be talking about right now instead of politics is the big moment from last night's Oscars. You all know what I'm talking about, of course, that instantly iconic and unforgettable moment when the Flash entered the Speed Force. <laughs> we all saw Oscars history unfold live before our eyes when that famous scene finally got the recognition it deserved. And clearly, that's what everyone is talking about today. Did you see Nicole Kidman's reaction? <laughs> That was either her face finding out the Flash had entered the Speed Force, or when she discovered her mysterious British husband was indeed the murderer. <laughs> anyway, unfortunately, this is a segment that's kind of supposed to be about politics, and that's what we have to talk about, which means it's time for a classic late-night smooth segue. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? And now, the closer look begins. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump's personal sway over the Republican Party seems as strong as ever, even if at times the candidacy backs fall flat. In some places, Trump-endorsed candidates are struggling in GOP primaries and having a hard time raising money. But in other places, like Texas, his endorsement was still very powerful. And it's shocking to me how popular he remains in Texas, given how stupid he looks in a cowboy hat. <laughs> he looks like an undercover cop trying to bust up a cattle rustling operation. On top of that, Trump keeps strongly hinting that he's gonna run in 2024, but his crowds aren't exactly getting bigger. A reporter at Trump's rally in Georgia over the weekend tweeted, I've covered more than two dozen Trump rallies. This is the smallest crowd I've seen at a rally of his in Georgia since he won the 2016 election. The reporter also posted a photo from the event that showed plenty of empty seats. Normally, you only see that many empty seats at a community theater production of Hamilton where they couldn't get the rights to any of the songs. My name is Alex, and I'm here to say, let's tell the British to go away. <laughs> There's even video of the people in the crowd filing out early as Trump was still speaking. Leaders who are going to save your state from this anarchy and betrayal. Your state? <laughs> They're like Mets fans heading to the subway in the seventh inning of a 10-run blowout. Only a few more weeks until that starts happening again, the crew. Also, I love that in that snippet, you can hear Trump yelling something about anarchy and betrayal. He sounds like he's reviewing last night's Oscars. There was anarchy, betrayal, chaos, and for some reason, some reason a tribute to Pulp Fiction, and yet, all these years later, we still don't know what was in the briefcase. <laughs> Why won't they tell us what was in the briefcase? Probably votes for Biden. Trump's crowd was still bored out of their minds, even though he was busting out his greatest hits. They watch his rallies the way I watch Shawshank on a Sunday afternoon. It's comforting, it's familiar, and I definitely don't make it to the end. So, in many ways, Trump remains the most powerful presence in the GOP, but there are some early signs that his personal grip over the party could be slipping. And I certainly don't want to jinx it, given that I've written him off before and been very wrong. In fact, at this point, I just have to assume that everything I predict about Trump is 100% wrong, which is why today I called my bookie and I put a million bucks on him to win in 2024, hoping that means he'll lose. Only problem is I didn't have a million bucks on me, so I had to borrow it from our cue card guy, Wally, who has been cashing in on his fame from this show. <laughs> Sorry, what? What is Wally coin? Seth, it's my new cryptocurrency. Why do you have a cryptocurrency? So I can buy NFCs. You mean NFTs? No, 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 NFCs, non-fungible cue cards. <laughs> Seth, it's a picture of an ape holding a cue card and you get to own a picture of it for as little as five grand. <laughs> Why? Anyway, <laughs> the point is Trump's personal sway over the GOP may or may not be waning, only time will tell. But even if Trump himself fades away, Trumpism and the Republican Party he molded will very much remain. Aspiring Republicans are all desperate to mimic him, and the central animating force of Republican politics today is still the rejection of democracy. Just look at Georgia gubernatorial candidate David Perdue, an ex-senator who's trying to court Trump's base by repeating his lies about the 2020 election and blaming the current Republican governor, Brian Kemp, for allowing Democrats to steal the election. Let me be very clear, very clear. In the state of Georgia, thanks to Brian Kemp, our elections in 2020 were absolutely stolen. And I'm fighting right now 
to find out what happened in 2020 and make sure that those people responsible for that fraud in 2020 go to jail. Trump's crowds will chant, lock them up about anyone now. You could be <laughs> Hillary Clinton or the ultra-conservative governor of Georgia. Doesn't matter. If you cross Trump, they want you in jail. Next, they're going to turn their ire on wind and umbrellas and the sun. <laughs> and there are times when I have to say, even Trump doesn't seem to have his heart in it. Trump's whole bit is trolling. He trolls the media and liberals, and his disciples have picked up the mantle like Florida Congressman Matt Gates, the only person on Earth, this is interesting, whose Funko Pop would have a smaller head. <laughs> Gates appeared at the rally and once again floated an idea he's pitched before to make Trump Speaker of the House if Republicans win the midterms in November. But Trump did not have much of a reaction. Give us the ability to fire Nancy Pelosi, take back the majority, impeach Joe Biden, and I'm going to nominate Donald Trump for Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Well, that was interesting. He sounds like a dad whose teenager just made him watch Euphoria for the first time. Well, that was very interesting. Hey, I'm gonna come to school with you tomorrow. Nope. For the whole day. So regardless of what happens to Trump himself, Trumpism is very much the heart of the GOP and here to stay. And it's not just the Matt Gaetzes and David Perdue's of the world. Republicans of the highest echelons of power have fully embraced the conspiracy theories and authoritarian impulses that define Trumpism. Last week, for example, we learned about bombshell text messages from Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, to Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, pushing the Trump administration to overturn the election. Tonight, our chief election and campaign correspondent, Robert Costa and Bob Woodward, have uncovered text messages between the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and President Trump's top aide, in which she repeatedly pushed to overturn the 2020 presidential election. The first message from Thomas came the day before Joe Biden was declared the winner of the 2020 presidential election. Do not concede, she wrote. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. Holy <laughs> That sounds like something Soromon would say in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. That is very Shakespearean for someone named Ginny. There's not a lot of Ginnies in Shakespeare. Just not a Shakespearean name. No one's buying tickets to see Romeo and Ginny. <laughs> I liked Romeo, but the Ginny character was a lot. And let's not forget the reason this is so shocking is Trump was open about his desire to have the Supreme Court help him stay in power. He said it repeatedly and took his case to the Supreme Court. There was even a case where Trump sued to block the National Archives from releasing any records related to January 6th. And the only justice to side with Trump in that 8 to 1 ruling was Clarence Thomas. He sided with Trump in a case to block the release of records that could have potentially implicated his own wife. That is a slap in the face to the Constitution. And even if it was to protect your wife, slapping is never okay. No slapping. So it's a massive scandal, although I get it. If I was saying crazy like that, my wife would want those texts blocked too. In fact, I'm pretty sure she already has my number blocked because I keep texting her, do you like my Pacino impression? And I get no response. I can't believe my own wife left me on red. And it wasn't just, don't you dare, don't you dare. We ruin what clapping means forever. <laughs> and it wasn't just Ginny Thomas. This morning, the Washington Post also reported on Ted Cruz's last ditch battle to keep Trump in power, including working directly with Trump to concoct a plan that came closer than widely realized to keeping him in power. Of course, Ted Cruz was involved. If there's a rotting, insidious idea somewhere, anywhere, it's more likely than not that Ted Cruz had a role in it. He was probably the one who told Trump, yeah, that hat looks great on you, sir. <laughs> And these two were apparently in constant communication throughout the months-long coup attempt that culminated in the January 6th riot. According to the Post, two days after the 2020 election, Trump tweeted the falsehood that I won this election by a lot around the time he sent that tweet. The president talked with Cruz on the phone. Cruz was also dining near the Capitol on the evening of December 8th, 2020, when he received an urgent call from Trump. A lawsuit had just been filed at the Supreme Court designed to overturn the election. Would you be willing 
to argue the case, Trump asked Cruz. Sure, I'd be happy to, Cruz said he responded. First of all, I have a hard time believing their phone conversations were that brief. I don't think Trump has ever made a short phone call in his entire life. Remember when he used to call in to the Fox and Friends while they just sat there without blinking for an hour? Just staring into the void, wondering, am I dead and is this my punishment? So Cruz was deeply involved in Trump's effort to overthrow the election. Fortunately for us, Cruz's last-ditch effort to overturn the election went about as well as his last-ditch effort to get on a plane in Montana. A new video this morning showing the moments before airport security was called on Texas Senator Ted Cruz. He missed his flight check-in Sunday in Bozeman, Montana, and options to reschedule are limited because of spring break. So the senator got in a heated conversation with airport employees over the issue. Cops were even called to calm down the Texas Republican. It happened at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport in Montana. A social media posting claimed that Cruz wouldn't calm down and was heard asking, do you know who I am? Ted Cruz strikes me as one of those people who hopes the answer to do you know who I am is no. <laughs> do you know who I am? I don't, thank God. I am but a weary traveler <laughs> who seeks passage home to my loved ones and not, I assure you, a noxious toady hell-bent on destroying American democracy. I've never even been to Cancun. And then, <laughs> today, after all those major bombshells, a federal judge wrote in a new court filing that Trump's attempted coup was more likely than not a crime, adding that the illegality of the plan was obvious. Yeah, man, no I'm tired of waiting for judges and DAs and special committees to tell us what we all saw with our own eyes was probably not legal. Why is this taking so long? This is like if a character in season eight of Game of Thrones said, hey, any word on whether or not winter is coming? It's like, where have you been? <laughs> you, li you literally have heard no update on that. The evidence of a criminal attempt to overthrow American democracy is so overwhelming and involves so many figures at the highest levels of the Republican Party, it's hard to fathom. And yet still, so many of our judges and prosecutors and elected officials saw what happened on January 6th, shrugged, and said, Well, that was interesting. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.